Hi, so today I want to review the structure and properties of the phospholipid bilayer membrane and specifically the property of flu uh, membrane fluidity. So we're, I'm going to start the conversation with the with a small review or discussion, you may be familiar with this before, about the structure of a phospholipid bilayer or a membrane. So you can see here that the structure is amphiphatic. I'm going to write the term down here. And this means that it is composed of both a hydrophilic polar head and a hydrophobic nonpolar fatty acid tail. And so what does that mean then? This means that no polar molecule can get inside that hydrophobic region because if it does so, it wouldn't be energetically favorable. And so the only things that can naturally cross are small or nonpolar molecules. And now I want you to keep this structure in mind as we discuss membrane fluidity. The key concept behind membrane fluidity is that membranes have to be fluid in order to function appropriately. And that's because things like proteins are always moving around inside this space. This is a really bad drawing, but I think it shows the point. And for instance, we have channel proteins that are opening and closing. And so you need a fluid background in order to do that. This brings me to the topic of transition temperatures. So in simple words, the transition temperature of a membrane is the temperature at which the membrane goes from being a fluid to a solid or gel-like state. Simple enough? But then you have to keep in mind that temperatures are dependent upon the environment. And so you have to and so you have to keep so you have to understand that the environment can have a big impact. on the fluidity of a membrane. So in terms of an example, say our membrane is in a cold environment. What do you expect the natural response is going to be? If I even ask a third grader, they're just going to say that the membrane will freeze, obviously. And so it's going to be in a solid or gel state. But then say someone tells you that as a scientist, you want, or like as a scientist, as a biologist, you want to keep your membrane in a cold environment, but you also want it to be fluid. How do we accomplish that? Or how does our body or our cells accomplish that? So our cells being the little superheroes they are, insert either cholesterol or unsaturated fatty acids inside our phospholipid bilayer membrane in order to keep our membrane fluid even in lower temperatures. And why, you may ask, does that happen? Why cholesterol or unsaturated fatty acids? Is, this is because cholesterol acts as a buffer 
And uh, what it does is that during higher temperatures or in conditions of heat, it increases membrane increases membrane rigidity not fluidity I'm said increases membrane rigidity so what it means is that during a higher temperature or during conditions of heat adding cholesterol makes the membrane more solid but then again because it's a buffer adding it during lower temperatures increases membrane fluidity and so now you understand why the cells might make the choice of adding the cholesterol but then our second component that we talked about there was our unsaturated fatty acids and you may remember that I mentioned in the beginning of this video that our nonpolar tails are fatty acids and so what does it mean to be inserting unsaturated fatty acids you may be familiar with this before, but unsaturated fatty acids have double bonds instead of single bonds. And so the double bonds mean that they have kinks. So instead of a single bond like that, which we don't have over here, we have these double bonded kinks. And so what does that mean for our membrane? this structure that we talked about in the beginning in mind okay these are our polar heads and so say we have these kinks instead of these single bonded these single bonded fatty acids you see how these kinks are preventing the structure from packing together This means that the structure can actually stay more in a liquid form and not go into solid packing. Another thing I want to talk about here is actually the length of our fatty acids. And so I think it becomes quite clear that our fatty acid tails are very important for whether our membrane stays in a fluid or a solid form. And why do I want to mention the length here is because if you have a shorter tail, okay, instead of a longer tail, this means that you have less van der Waals interactions and when you have less of these interactions it means there's less heat and because of that our membrane is going to be able to stay in a fluid form more longer in a cold temperature and so what I want you to take out of this video the summary is that the longer the fatty acid tail, the higher your transition temperature, and the less fluid your membrane. Similarly, 
the more saturated your membrane is, the less fluid it's going to be. I hope this helps in your understanding of transition temperatures and how they depend on the structure of a phospholipid membrane and I hope this is helpful.